six year old who gets up at four o'clock or whatever, four or five for whatever reason. And then I think the three year old just hears him. So she jumps out of bed and is like, oh, hey, it's time to be up and play and that whole thing. So. It's a familiar story at our place as well. My son is up at five only because we force him to stay in bed. It's a, the benefit of him being able to tell time now is look at the clock, don't get up. Yep. Yeah, we have an older, a nine-year-old, and yeah, he finally understands how to work a clock or read a clock, I should say. So little by little. Okay, let's ask them. That. Okay, just real quick. Uh, good evening, folks. Just um, wanted to double check if uh, Commissioner Fields had contacted anybody about whether or not he would be in, attending. I had not seen any response. Okay, them. so we're waiting for him to log in. I did, um, let's see. And, and, uh, and okay, so chairing today will be who? I will. Okay. All right. Thanks, yeah. Ben. And so Commissioner Hansen also called to let us know that he was having issues with the internet. And if need be, he would try calling in on the phone and using that smartphone with the video audio on it. There's a, there's a, so, a call. Oh, you know what? If there is, Ask him if that's let's see. Just want to double check if the phone, we have somebody in on a phone right now, if that's Commissioner Hansen or not. Yep. It is. Okay. Hey, am I on? There you go. Yes. Perfect. Just in the nick of time. Good. Okay, so we are still waiting for Commissioner Fields. It is 6.01. So yeah, go ahead, Ben. We'd start the meeting. Okay, yeah. So we'll call this meeting to order at 6.01. Uh, for the audience tonight, I'm the chair and will serve as the presiding officer uh, for tonight's meeting. Uh, before we move forward, I'd like to announce that in response to executive orders issued by Governor Newsom, the city is conducting a teleconference public meeting utilizing Zoom conferencing communications. This allows the city to continue to conduct essential business and comply with public health administration recommendations to protect the public and city employees, practice social distancing and limit exposure by not allowing in-person public meeting. So to ensure that the public will be able to participate, uh, public comments can be submitted as live comments uh, during the Zoom meeting and via email at public comments at cityofglendora.org. Um, Madam City Clerk, would you please conduct a roll call? Uh, thank you, Chair. At this time, I'd like to conduct an oral roll call and request that each commissioner respond with present when their name is called. Commissioner Fields, I don't see that he's logged in. He's probably still waiting to come in, so he's not present at this time. Commissioner Hansen. We need to unmute. Un unmute me. There you okay, go. Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Shaw. Present. Uh, thank you. Vice Chair Nakano. Present. And Chair Armel. Present. Four of five commissioners are present. If uh, Commissioner Fields logs in, we will announce that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Nakano, do you want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Absolutely. Uh, you can please stand, place your hand over your heart, repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. America. to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God. indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Vice Chair Nakano. I'm going to open this up to. Uh, before we open it up for public comment, does anyone wish to reorder or add anything to the agenda? No. All right. Nothing's Hearing me. none. I'm gonna open this up to public comment. So I'll invite any members of the public uh, that wish to address the commission. Uh, you have three minutes uh, to speak of any of the uh, agenda items on the current agenda and your time to speak is uninterrupted. Uh, please address your uh, comments to the presiding officer, which would be myself. Uh, if you would like to request to speak, select the raise hand icon and Zoom before the close of the public comment period. Uh, you will then be called on uh, when your turn is up to speak. Do we have anybody outside uh, currently? 
Madam City Clerk. Thank you, Chair. At this time, we've received no request via the Zoom meeting to give public comment and none, uh, no emails that have been received through the public comment email. All right. Thank you. Uh, hearing that, I will close the public comment period. All right. And moving on, we'll move on to commission uh, and statement reports. Does any commissioner have any uh, anything to report or any announcements that they would like to make? None. Nothing for, None me. for me. All right. How about the public works director, uh, Sweet? Does she have anything to report or any announcements that you would like to add? I don't have any at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to special items. Uh, special item number two is the reorganization of the Water Commission and selection of new officers. And I'll turn the meeting over to the clerk who will conduct the selection of chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. At this time, uh, I declare the Office of Chair and Vice Chair vacant. Nominations are now in order for Chair. Are there any nominations for Chair? I'd move uh, Justin Nakano for Chair. And that's Commissioner Hansen? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, second is not required. So, um, Hansen. Uh, so Commissioner Nakano is nominated for Chair. Um, if there are no other uh, nominations, I declare that uh, Commissioner Nakano is elected chair by acclamation. Congratulations, Chair Nakano. Thank you. I will now turn the meeting over to you to select the vice chair and to conduct the remainder of the meeting. All right, uh, thank you once again uh, for your faith in having me run these meetings over Zoom. I'm not sure I have as much faith in my internet connection, but uh, we shall see. So the very important uh, nomination of filling in for uh, when my connection goes out, uh, let's have the selection of vice chair. Uh, are there any nominations for vice chair? I'll nominate Commissioner Hansen. Okay, are there any other uh, nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, uh, I declare that uh, Commissioner Hansen is now elected uh, vice chair by acclamation. Congratulations. Thank you, and hopefully we'll be in person. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, okay, we'll move down the agenda to the uh, liaison report. I'd like to invite um, Commission Liaison uh, Ubagalu to report. Uh, thank you, and uh, good evening, and congratulations, uh, Chair Nakano and uh, members of the commission. Uh, just a couple of updates on my part. Um, as you may know, under the City Council's approved strategic plan is a key initiative, uh, which is a comprehensive water infrastructure assessment of our system, uh, as well as a corresponding water rate study. Uh, you know, with the objective of really taking a look at what we need, uh, not only for infrastructure reliability, um, but also for water supply. And you know, part of that is also developing a rate structure that can provide the means to adequately fund upcoming water capital projects. Uh, so just to provide a brief update on where we are with this, we actually just published the request for proposal today. Uh, so we're inviting qualified consultants to submit proposals for professional engineering services. Uh, in the coming weeks, we'll gauge what kind of interest we receive, um, as well as facilitate an optional pre-proposal meeting on December 2nd. Uh, the final day for consultants to submit a uh, proposal will be December 16th of 2021. And um, secondly, you know, your commission received an email earlier this week regarding a potential city council water commission joint meeting next month, uh, I believe on November 16th. You know, as we prepare for that meeting, uh, we're certainly interested in hearing some of the topics you would like to discuss. Uh, we do plan on giving a more in-depth update on the water infrastructure assessment. Uh, as well as an update on the state and regional water supply and how we're modifying our, our conservation programs to respond to the, to the pending drought. So, um, you know, if there's anything else you would like to either discuss or receive more information on, uh, please let us know uh, this evening or in the coming days as we prepare for that meeting. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like we might have a comment from uh, Commissioner Shaw. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chisholm, for the update. Just a, a quick question, um, just for my understanding. What, where is the request coming from to meet with the council? 
Uh, I, I'm really actually excited about it, but uh, want to know what the context might be, if there's anything you guys could share with us. No, absolutely, Ryan. I believe this was at the request of uh, our council, one of our council members. Uh, at our last council meeting, they actually requested to uh, uh, meet with the commission to discuss uh, several, you know, a lot of the pending drought. Um, I'm, I'm sure conservation will be a, a heavy topic there, as well as the infrastructure assessment, but they would just like to have a joint meeting at the request of the council. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's not any more questions or comments, uh, we will move on to the consent calendar. Uh, I believe all things on the consent calendar are taken in one motion. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'll move it. Thank you. That is Commissioner Shaw. Uh, is there a second? Second. That was Armel. Yes. Thank you. Um, I will now take a roll call vote. Commissioner Field still is not logged in. Commissioner Hansen? Yes. I'm sorry, Vice Chair Hansen? Yes. yes. <laughs> Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Chair Nakano? Yes. Commissioner Armel? Yes. And that passes 4 0 with one absence. Thank you. Um, let's see. So we are on to um, unfinished business. Is that correct, Elvia? Yes, that's correct. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, so for unfinished business, uh, we have the water conservation update. Uh, I'd like to invite water conservation officer uh, De Jesus to report. Hi, good evening, uh, commissioners. Uh, my name is Armando de Jesus. I'm actually currently the interim management water uh, management analyst for the city right now. I'm stepping in uh, for Jennifer Aguilar. And today I will be doing the water conservation update for the first fiscal, I'm sorry, for the first quarter of this new fiscal year. Next slide, please. Okay, for our rebate program, as uh, just for the first uh, three months of this quarter, uh, we received 49 applications, total of $11,891 uh, that we have already been, uh, we've already rebated back to our residents. And we've physically inspected 100% of those, those uh, items. Uh, residents are kind of back into that mode of, you know, like you're more than welcome to come back into our homes and the uh, staff is continuing to wear a mask, regardless if it's inside or outside the property. So they're, they're more than welcome to, to allow us to come back. Um, our number one, officially our number one rebated item has changed. Uh, for many years, that item has been toilets. And uh, in July, starting July 1st, we actually made some, some, what I believe, some minor modifications to our toilet uh, qualifications. Uh, for many years, we've been requiring toilets to be 1.28 gallons per flush. And that's actually the new state standard. So you cannot find any toilet that, that has any more water than that. Uh, for the, I know 15 years ago, you could find toilets that are five or six gallons, but that's not a, that's a thing of the past now. So staff noticed a trend of uh, people replacing uh, water efficient toilets with water efficient toilets. So, and with the same amount. So it didn't make sense at that point to continue giving out that amount. So we reduced it from 1.28 gallons to 1.1. Uh, so far uh, in the past three months, we've only received two applications for that. And in the past, around this time, we would have received about 30. So this goes to show um, how some residents were just using the program to buy a brand new toilet. And our main purpose of the program is to help people reduce uh, their water consumption on their property. So the newly rebated, uh, number one most rebated item is actually an, uh, an irrigation controller. And I do apologize. I believe I did write on the uh, report that it's a washing machine. It's not washing machines, it's controllers. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Our turf removal program uh, came back uh, with a vengeance. A lot of people are really interested in this program right now. Uh, started July 1st, uh, we, uh, Program is uh, pretty pretty simple. It's two dollars a square foot, up to two thousand square feet, with a maximum of four four thousand uh, dollar potential rebate. 
uh, one condition that we've had was that the turf has to be green and they have to replace it with something that's drought tolerant that uses less water, artificial turf, rocks, mulch, you name it, and we'll, we'll go ahead and accept it. Uh, the first, I would say, month that we did the program, we got a total of three applications. It wasn't uh, moving really fast as we anticipated, so staff decided to uh, actually promote the program more heavily by doing a citywide mailer, as most of you live in town probably received this flyer in town. And as soon as they started hitting mailing boxes, we probably got 150 calls within three days. And it kept staff really, really busy. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is what we've done so far in the first quarter. We received 33 approved projects, approximately 49,860 square feet that have been allocated for removal, uh, which doesn't mean that they've already done it, it just means that that's what we've measured so far for potential removal. So the resident does have a, the ability of changing their mind, of reducing their project once we finally get there. So that could be smaller than that. Uh, so three, pro three projects have been completed, sorry. Three projects have been officially completed up to date. Uh, total of 5,548 square feet has been removed, and we've already rebated over $11,000 or close to $1,200, $12,000, sorry, uh, from their program. Uh, we have a lot more than that now since the past three couple months. Um, we've actually made some uh, minor modifications to the, to the program that I'll explain in a little bit. Thank you. Next slide. So this is an example of uh, actually the first person that completed their project. Uh, so they obviously removed their turf and converted it to uh, drought, uh, artificial turf. And they came out really nice. Next slide, please. So this is another project that was completed basically almost around the same time. And the thing I, thing I like about this uh, particular project is that the him and his neighbor actually were talking about redoing their grass and they decided to hire the same contractor to do both their houses at the same time. This is just a little bit what they did. They did every single inch of their property. They removed their grass. They, because they did the project together, the contractor gave them a, a pretty hefty discount and they saved a lot of money. In the past couple of months, about four additional houses on the street have kind of gone on that bandwagon and have replaced all of their grass on their property. So we're really excited that word is finally spreading and one neighbor is looking at another neighbor's house and, and kind of doing the same thing to reduce, to reduce their consumption. Right. Next slide, please. All right, so this one is also artificial turf. It's kind of a combination of both things. It's kind of, it, uh, I believe it looks beautiful at, at artificial turf with some rocks and some draw tar and plant options right there. They're, they're really tiny right now, but eventually they, they will grow. And uh, resident was really happy with uh, uh, how the, the uh, final product came out. We, we're happy that they actually were able to jump on it. This is another example about eight different properties surrounding this property are now obviously, uh, they're doing the same exact thing. So the word is spreading. Um, one of the new things that we've been wanting to do with this program is that in the past, we've been receiving a lot of different uh, uh, complaints from residents about our program as far as what our conditions are. Uh, given our, our current circumstance with the drought, we decided to make some, some modifications to our guidelines or procedures. And one of the main one, one of the main concerns that most residents have it's regarding our having live turf by the time we actually do the, the physical inspection, uh, because we do have such a large amount of people wanting to do it. And sometimes by the time they decide to do the, the program, by the time they actually submit the application, a lot of residents are turning off their irrigation to kind of get ahead of the game and completely understand. But we've been getting there in life and the turf is now dead. So we've uh, actually staff reached out to other um, uh, water agencies that have turf pool programs to just kind of get get some ideas of if they're having similar issues and, and actually they are. 
So particularly we reached out to NWD, Metropolitan Water District, and they've made some major modifications with their program due to the current drought restrictions. Uh, so as of August 1st, they actually are now accepting any turps that are considered dead, any properties that don't have any dirt do not qualify. The song is just distilled turf and it shows that there has some life or at least that there and it's not completely dirt, we will accept it. So we are actually changing our program to start accepting those kind of uh, uh, projects as well. Uh, one of the other uh, complaints that we've been receiving is uh, in the past, we've had a procedure that we would only rebase the materials that go back into the project. So meaning uh, any rocks, mulch, plants, anything, anything that we could physically see that goes back to the project, we could rebate it. Excuse me. Uh, one thing that we would remove from that final cost was labor and the cost to dispose of the, the actual turf. Uh, as we're learning, it looks like it's that part of the project is extremely expensive. Some residents are actually paying up to $2,000 just to get that grass out of there. It's not even including the materials and getting everything installed. So staff decided to, to make some major changes in that case, and we are not now accepting anything, any, anything that, that comes through our way as far as what the residents are paying for cost, removal, label, labor, uh, intensive work, and materials. So as long as they can provide a receipt showing proof that they pay for these services, we will include it in their final cost on that. So that's one of the ma major things. So uh, we are getting a lot of good feedback from residents that, that, uh, are, that had concerns about that, and they're happy, and they're now submitting their applications again. Right. Uh, next slide, please. Our water use efficiency surveys, uh, we've been really busy these past couple of three months. We received 64 surveys in total. Uh, summertime is usually our busiest time, hence why these numbers are, are pretty high already early in the year. Uh, so far, we've done 49 surveys uh, having to do with high water bills. Again, because of summertime, people are, are running their sprinklers a little too long and they start getting their bills and they, they they purposely increase their water so they could get their, their, green, their grass a little greener, but sometimes they kind of overdo it and they don't know what that, that fine line is as far as um, how long they should be watering. Some residents, we go out there, they're watering for 45 minutes per station, which they're not seeing us at nighttime because they're sleeping. So we go out there and we help them uh, change their controllers and give them ideas of how long they should be doing that. Uh, the other uh, 19, uh, were related to CC tags. Those we, fo we focus more on trying to look for those leaks that residents are having difficult times to find it. But nine times out of 10, we're actually able to find that leak for them. We can't fix it, but at least we could pinpoint exactly where that is. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, our violations, uh, we receive 105 green tag violations. Again, because during summertime, this is that, that time that we've, uh, we are getting a lot of broken sprinklers uh, and, and excessive runoff, which really goes hand in hand. Next slide, please. Our education and outreach uh, programs, uh, we continued our, the Library Plaza Discovery event that we started in June. Uh, this event went on for close to two months. Uh, staff continued to go, I believe it was two, two times per week. Uh, one in the evening, or one in the noon, and uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays would be in the evening. Uh, we didn't get as much foot traffic as we anticipated with this. Uh, a lot of the residents were kind of the same people that would come up, but it did give a good visual representation to the city, or at least our residents, that we're still out there spreading the word as much as we can, given our limited uh, uh, resources of events that we've had built due to COVID, but we were happy to be out there and residents were happy to see us again. All right, next slide. Our flashback car, our car flashback event uh, finally happened this year. Last year it was canceled and, and they, a lot of people came in. A lot of people were happy to see us. Um, usually we get the same amount of people that come in saying, oh, last year I got a, 
um, uh, nozzle from you guys and it broke. And I was really hoping that you guys were here. And I'm happy that you guys are back and spreading the word about water conservation. Uh, we give out a total of a, over a thousand items. Staff actually had to go back and get additional items because it was so busy. So we are all happy and excited that we were finally given this opportunity to physically talk to our residents again and spread that word. Next to that, our next slide, I'm sorry. And our national night out event was unfortunately uh, canceled this year. Uh, it normally happens about two weeks after flashback and it was postponed to October, just a couple of weeks ago. And the police department decided to cancel it for the rest of the year uh, due to continued COVID concerns. So uh, it will be pushed next year. I'm not sure if it'll be October or if it'll be moved back to its original state, which is around August. Next slide. Uh, our outre outreach fund expansions. This is one of the new things that we, we've been trying to do. We're trying to be more educational and make educational videos about where our water comes from. A lot of people really don't know. I know we do a lot of classes with our fifth graders and we teach them, but the adults truly, really don't know where it is. So we made a couple of videos to kind of guide them through Chisholm came out in one of them. Uh, another one what, that we did in August was with our our, uh, our water protection supervisor, Ron Niska, he gave a, a quick video of our water sampling program, uh, letting residents know that they could ask for any, uh, if they ever have any questions about their water, they're more than welcome to, uh, to call us and we'll go out there and we'll do a sample check so we can check to see if everything's going on, All right? Uh, the next one would be our, our social media posts. Uh, in the past, we've been using Facebook and Instagram and just kind of posting uh, what we call Water to Water Wednesdays. We noticed that there wasn't a lot of feedback or a lot of um, foot traffic going to the, our social media. So we're kind of taking a pivot and rethinking of ways that we could reach not just Facebook, but uh, just the, uh, we're trying to change how we're, uh, presenting information to residents. A lot of information past was really dry. So we try to make it more, um, not, not funny, but informational, but at the same time, entertaining. We, we, we believe that residents tend to remember messages when it has another message kind of tied together. So we're currently working on that right now. Right. Next slide. Okay, our, our city comparison numbers from 2021 comparing to 20, uh, 2020. As you can see, we did not do very well. Uh, we're, we're actually doing a little worse. Uh, in comparing the two years, we're actually up 1.43%. 1. 1. Uh, compared to last year, we, we're doing a lot better, but this year, for some reason, we're not doing as well. Uh, in the past three months, uh, as far as rain is concerned, we've gotten point, uh, 0.29 inches of rain. Uh, compared to 2020, we got zero. So we did slightly better, but the first couple of months during the year just made a big impact as far as how much we've been conserving. We were heading the right direction. And then little by little, it, those numbers just start going up. That's the reason why we're trying to get, come back and rethink of how we can send that message back to our residents at the drought is not over. We're still we're still in it, and it's getting worse. So we're we'll be sending out those messages pretty soon. Next slide. All right. So these are the numbers. So 2021, 2013 are the numbers that we actually report to the state on a monthly basis. In this case, we're actually not doing as as bad. We're uh, we like to compare our we like our threshold to be about 20 percent, and we're close enough. Last month, I believe we're close to 15. So that actually moved up by 2%. So we're doing a lot better on this, on this end. Next slide. And these are comparing uh, 2021 to 2005, which was the original uh, numbers that we were supposed to be submitting to the state. And staff continued to kind of keep track to see how we were doing from then now. And again, where these numbers look a lot better than obviously 2021 and 2020. Uh, at 16.39%. Uh, as you can see by the rain difference as well, it's that, that rain difference is, is pretty significant. Uh, it's where at negative 0.73 inches of rain. So we're really hoping we get that rainfall just like we did a couple of weeks ago or last week. So next slide. 
Okay, so these are some of the uh, major changes that we're trying to make to, to try to see if we could fight the drought in, in the city. So we are collaborating with multiple different agencies, even with city facilities on the zone. We are trying to pinpoint specific city facilities that still have ornamental grass that's not being used. And we're trying to see if we can remove that grass and put drought tolerant landscaping, just like what we did in other in the cities, but just we're trying to expand that. So we, are, we will be working with our parks department and, and our city facilities to um, pinpoint what location we need to focus on so we can remove that grass and start saving water for the cities as well. Uh, we're also working on our top users list, which uh, mainly focuses, to be honest, uh, in the really high water users. Um, a lot of, uh, one of them would be the, high, the, uh, the schools in our city. So we are getting that list compiled so we can um, see which school has the word. All of them use all of them use a lot of water, obviously, because they have a, a big field. We're trying to focus which ones are the higher ones, and we're going to set up meetings with them to see if, if they are interested in collaborating and removing some of their grass and doing something drought tolerant, with, uh, regardless if it's artificial turf or, or drought tolerant landscaping. Uh, next one is our me uh, Metropolitan Water District. Uh, they are actually, they, they have their turf mode program. We are in the middle of in, uh, collaborating with them back again so we can combine both of our programs. So right now our program gives two, $2 a square foot up to 2,000 square feet. Uh, with Metropolitan Water District, they're doing something similar. It's $2 a square foot up to, I believe it's 5,000 square feet, which is a potential additional money for of $10,000 back to our residents. Um, in the near future, I believe within the next couple of weeks, they're gonna increase that to $3 a square feet, square foot up to 5,000 square feet, which is up to $15,000. And then combined with ours, it's a potential of $19,000. That could go back to, to our, our residents' pockets. So we are, we're almost there. We're trying to see what the calm to find details as far as what, we, what they need from the city, but it looks like that collaboration is going to happen. So we're really excited to work with them again. We did do, do this uh, back in 2014, and we're excited to, to uh, add this program back to ours. Our social media expansion, uh, we're going to continue that our, our educational water videos right now. So far, we've had two. We do have um, a future plans on doing additional videos right now turf mobile is taking a lot of our time but we're going to continue with those videos our water social media posts as well we again uh, we are working in collaboration with our media specialist greg and craig uh, and they're going to try to make uh, these posts more educational less directive and less uh, mandates uh, currently we are waiting for the mandates uh, from the state, we don't know. Everyone's kind of waiting for those. Uh, we will be sending a direct mailer to your residents as soon as we receive that information, but we're gonna try to be more educational and less, um, this is what we need to do or we're gonna find you, which in the past, that's what we've done. If we notice some backlash from residents uh, not paying attention or not wanting to listen to us because it was the information was really dry and repetitive. So we're gonna to try to change that direction to a positive way. Next slide, Next slide please. And last but not least, I'm not sure if anyone knows already or if that's been announced, but uh, both Jennifer Aguilar and Clark Elliott uh, actually no longer work with the city. Uh, they both uh, found amazing opportunities with other job uh, water agencies. And I just wanted to give them a quick shout out. I've worked with these two individuals for many years and they brought a lot to, the, to our department, uh, more specifically with Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer uh, started off as a public works administrative assistant for a year and she quickly moved up that ladder and became the management analyst for the, our, the city. And she took our water conservation program from Really, when I started working here, all we did was drive around and uh, do presentations for kids here and there. But Jennifer took it to that next level and elevated our program and added programs that the city has never seen before. So much that other water agencies actually come reach to us and ask for help 
and what we've done. And we're more than welcome to share that information with her. But thanks, thanks to her for her eight years of experience and, and putting all that effort, um, showing those programs to our residents that, that are benefiting to this day. And I have, I have some big shoes to fill right now. <laughs> uh, also, uh, Clark Elliott, uh, he's been my right-hand man for the past couple of years. He's a gentleman that would go out there with me to do all, all of our surveys. Uh, he started here as a part-time water conservation officer for two years. He actually left the city and came back as a full-time officer for three years. He's, he's, brought, he's, he's brought a lot to the table, a lot of things that we've had. And actually, Turf Mobile was his idea to bring it back. So that's one of the things that, the final things that he did before he left. So I just want to say thank you to the both individuals. And for now, the conservation is basically just me. And we have uh, Ivy, which is our, our administrative assistant who's been kind of helping along and other, other people along with the department helping along. But we have a lot of ways to go and, and uh, I just want to say thank you to them. All right, and that concludes my presentation. All right, thank you, Armando. That was, uh, that was a great job, great presentation. And yeah, we'll definitely uh, miss Jennifer and, and Clark. Uh, you know, especially at these meetings and at seeing them at the events and all that. And um, thank you to them for so many years of, of service and sure. really revolutionizing that program. And we look forward to what you'll be able to do with it uh, in the years thank coming you. up. Um, let, uh, let's move on to some discussion delibera deliberations from the commissioners. I'll uh, kind of go down the line. Uh, Vice Chair Hansen. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Armando. Great, great report. Um, question, you've lost two people within the conservation uh, group. Uh, are you going to be allowed to recruit and bring uh, additional staff in? Uh, currently, right now, I know uh, they are, HR is working on uh, posting those jobs. I'm not sure if it's going to be within the next couple of months or next, what, I'm not exactly sure, but we're definitely going to be filling those positions again. Okay, because one, one of my questions for you is going to be is that um, uh, if you had more money, where are there additional programs you would like to uh, implement? But if you're shorthanded with staff, it'd be kind of difficult to uh, uh, implement new programs. But do you have any other new programs that you're thinking about that uh, you might ask to be included in the next year's budget? Uh, currently, right now, where our main focus right now is outside usage because it's the majority of what everyone's using. So that's what we're focusing our programs on, um, on turf removal. Um, in the next couple of months, I actually would like to impl implement maybe doing like a uh, uh, irrigation controller giveaway, some sort of incentive to let residents know, hey, stop using those older controllers and start using these that are more effective that could actually help you in the long run when it does rain, it'll shut it off automatically without us physically having to notify you, let you know. But uh, once we get more staff on board, hopefully we'll, we'll come up with, with additional ideas, but so far that's all we have. Okay, great. The other question is regarding your, uh, your top water users. Um, are, do you have some residents that you've identified that uh, you're going to approach with um, different conservation uh, programs they could implement to save water at their at their homes? We definitely have some some residents on on that list as well. So we haven't okay. uh, uh, decided exactly what we're going to do, but we will be approaching certain residents or or and it's obviously some of the larger properties in town. So will we? extending our hand and letting them know that there's options if they would like to accept those options. Okay, great. Uh, final question. Um, I know Three Valleys uh, gets money from the Metropolitan Water District. Uh, do you take advantage of that? Uh, yes, we actually just had a meeting a couple of days ago and they officially ran out of funds for this year. So Metropolitan Water District offers funding through Three Valleys for two years and they've run out of money, so they won't get additional funding until July. Um, okay. And so in combination with what I was talking about with the Metropolitan Turf Mobile Program, in the past, uh, Three Valleys actually used to be uh, our liaison through MWD. So they, we ran our program directly with Three Valleys. So in, 
the past couple of years, their coordinator actually retired and they hadn't had uh, personnel to bring back uh, the Turbo Mobile program. And they're, they're, as of yesterday, we're back in talks with them bringing that back. So we're going to be working more directly with uh, Three Valleys and, and with uh, uh, Metropolitan Water District, which is a lot easier for us to be, if I'm being honest. But, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Uh, but in, that's great. I mean, in, you're, you're, go ahead. No, saying uh, once the new fiscal year starts again, we will be asking for whatever money we could get for them so we could start getting, uh, getting some of that funding back into the city as well. That's great. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Commissioner Shaw, do you have any comments or questions? Thanks, uh, and agreed. Good, good update, Armando. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, bummer. We lost Jennifer and Clark. I'm sure they're off to better pastures. So, uh, on behalf of the commission, let them know we appreciate their time and effort, um, and hopefully, uh, success in the future for them. Um, yeah. the other, um, uh, Director, sorry, Commissioner Hansen asked some of the other things I was going to bring up, so I won't repeat them. Um, I have a few questions uh, regarding probably water supply outlook, so I'll just hold off until that item comes up, but it, I know it kind of ties into to this presentation well, but we can wait till we get through the rest of it. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Armel? Yeah, real quick, you may have mentioned it, but I'm um, not sure if I heard you correctly. Um, the additional rebate that you guys were looking at trying to get for turf removal with Metropolitan, you said you're working on it, but was there like an estimated time in which you thought that that may come to fruition uh, to be uh, able to uh, get both benefits from Glendora and from Metropolitan? I'm actually hoping it's within the next couple of weeks, and it's just a matter of us uh, getting together and uh, submitting a combined application there is some differences between our program and theirs so we would have to make some modifications one of the bigger uh things with them is that they actually do not accept artificial turf as part of their program so we would have to at that point we would have to give the residents the option of just doing ours and that's it or if they would like to change their mind and doing something but uh hopefully within the next couple of weeks that that should be starting up i'm giving it about a month Okay. Right to be full my, uh, my follow up to that then is that current residents that have like pending applications in, will we be helping um, since theirs isn't finalized yet? Will we be given the opportunity if theirs is still pending uh, to be able to apply for additional uh, through Metropolitan when it wasn't available, like if you, whether when they started their application process? Absolutely. It, it, and it'll only be for those residents that still have not done a pre inspection. We're, we're Anyone still pending. That Okay. Exactly. Anyone that's been approved, unfortunately, is kind of okay. done and over with. But yeah, make and, sure they any, weren't going to be cut out and just miss no, it no, by any, you know a week or two. Anyone that's still on that 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 uh, that list will be contacted and let them know there's there's an opportunity to get more money. Would you like to step in and do this instead? But no, we'll we'll be reaching out okay. to them as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And and yeah. Finally, I just wanted to. Uh, commend staff on uh, the effort to kind of broaden those rules on that turf removal. Uh, certainly seemed a little odd if the, if the grass died because they weren't watering and conserving water, that they would be excluded from that uh, rebate and didn't really make much sense. So exactly. um, I'm glad that um, there's been a bit of broadening of the rules to, to accommodate people who are actually doing what we are hoping that they would do. So, exactly. um, okay, any other comments then? Uh, hearing none, the recommendation is to receive and file the water conservation update. Uh, can I have a motion to receive and file? That was, uh, yeah, that was Vice Chair Hansen with a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. That is, yes, Commissioner Shaw. I'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Armel? Yes. Commissioner Fields is still absent. Uh, Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Vice Chair Hansen? Yes. And Chair Nakano. Yes. That passes 401. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the new business portion of the agenda, uh, presenting an update of the Engineering Division's CIP program. I'd like to invite Principal Engineer Ansari to report. You need to unmute.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commission members, and the city staff. Um, I'm presenting the camp uh, update on the capital improvement program for water projects. Next slide, please. This year, Public Works has taken uh, our, um, another strategy and an effort to streamline CIP project delivery. Five water main project replacements has been grouped together with corresponding street rehabilitation projects. During the budget process, um, budgeting uh, request for budgeting was done not only for construction portion, but also for the design services and the construction management. Um, city staff has were put five packages together for different street and water projects. And we are working simultaneously for the design services at this time. Next slide, please. So for those five projects, which are um, grouped together, uh, city went out for request for proposal for design services. Timeline is pretty robust. And on October 5, city posted the RFP on city's online bid portal. October 19, uh, proposals were received. 55 consultants reviewed the RFP. That is a big uh, turnaround and 14 consultants submitted their proposal. At this time, staff is reviewing the proposals and preparing to do the interviews of the consultants before making the final uh, selection. Next slide, please. There are five projects that we are working on, starting from the East side of the city, it is Emilia and Country Club. Then Lone Hill, um, north of Foothill, Monoloa, that is south of Route 66, uh, Bennett Avenue, Westridge and Washington, and Leodora and Yakarage. So the projects are pretty much spread over the city. Next slide, please. For Country Club and Country Club Vista, it, the new project will replace 2,000 linear foot of um, water main. Seven consultants have submitted their design proposals for this. Estimated construction cost is $700,000. Next slide, please. Lone Hill, Palomar, and Cumberland. This is Lone Hill, north of Foothill and the cul-de-sacs on the east side of Palomar and Cumberland, it will replace 2,100 linear foot of uh, water main and the estimated construction cost is $715,000. Next slide, please. Monoloa and vicinity, these are streets on east side of Glendora, south of Route 66. Uh, it will be replacing 15 5,850 linear foot of water main. Estimated construction cost is $2,350,000. Next slide, please. Bennett, Westridge, and Washington. It is on the west side of the city. It will replace 7,000 linear foot of pipe and estimated Construction cost is over $2.5 million. Next slide, please. Leodora and Yaka Ridge. Again, it is on the west side of the city, northwest corner of the uh, city. It will replace 6,550 linear feet of pipe, water main, and estimated cost of $2,450,000. All together with the street improvement projects, these five projects will be over $16 million and it, they will be done within two years of time. Next slide, please. Uh, there are seven ongoing projects which are in different 
stages of their design or construction. One water main replacement project is from 2021, four are from 1920, and two are the pumps and booster station related projects from fiscal year 1819. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, these seven projects are again spread over in different parts uh, of the city. It's pretty much all over. Next slide, please. Dawson, this, since last uh, Water Commission meeting, what, uh, Dawson, Pennsylvania, Washington project has been completed. Uh, approved budget for the project was $500,000 and final construction cost came out 438,340. So a little bit saving over there. Um, this is These streets were paved after the uh, water main replacement. If you uh, happen to go around Dawson by golf course, you can see the new street surface came out really good. We, the city used rubberized asphalt to repave the street ride is a smooth and um, less uh, damage to the vehicles. Next slide, please. Donington Avenue is also completed. Um, budget cost was $280,000 and actual construction cost came out $236,280. Um, Notice of completion will be going to the council on November 9th council meeting. Uh, this street is not um, scheduled to do the street repaving as of now, but once we will be doing Leodora street repaving, we will combine this uh, street segment with that repaving project. Next slide, please. Colon water main improvements. Um, the budgeted cost was $264,000. And it is going to have award for on May 9th council meeting. Um, the limits are from foothill to mountain view or by the Little Delton Wash. It will replace 700 linear foot of uh, water main. The challenge, there are two challenges. Uh, one is the weather condition. We are hoping that this project will start soon. Uh, it is, we are entering into the rainy season and hoping it will rain uh, quite. And the other is connection at North, at LA County, Little Delton Wash County has no proper as built record of the water main in their over their facilities so they it can be challenging when it comes to tying by the wash next slide please cosec saint vladimir lawford um, was awarded in july still it is not started construction because of uh, issues with the material procurement uh, it will be uh, and the city is checked on our end that if the material procurement is delayed and we found that it is something that is going all over uh, states and uh, contractor are having hard time to find ductile iron pipes. And as of now, even PVC pipe is in short, uh, little shortage. The expected start of construction as this time for the contractor is February 2022 when they are insured by the supplier to get the pipe materials. Next slide, please. Bender Carter Center Fair project, uh, the it, um, design services has been awarded in, in June of 2021, con, uh, consultant is working on the design. They had already submitted 60% design plans and the final design is expected by end of December, 2021. This is our pilot project to use PVC pipe. Uh, and uh, we are hoping by the time it went out for award, 
PV, the material supply will be in better situation. And with PVC, we will be able to start the project earlier than as compared to central Adamia. Next slide, please. So this is end of my presentation. I request the commission to receive and file the engineer's division CIP program updates. Thank you, Maliha. Um, yeah, certainly challenges with uh, supply procurement, but definitely glad to see that some of those projects came under budget as well um, during that time. Um, let's uh, have some discussion deliberations for the commissioners. I'll go down the, the list again, uh, starting with Vice Chair Hansen. Do you have anything to ask or add? Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit of a disadvantage uh, working off my iPhone on this, uh, this Zoom meeting. So I don't have an agenda in front of me, but I did have an item uh, question on the, uh, there's a uh, capital improvement item. And I think it was in year 2019, 2020. It's the uh, Big Dalton pump station for a million dollars. That project really isn't needed for the city. And I'd like to see the city uh, redirect those funds to look at uh, diversifying their water water supply portfolio? Yes, that project is not, city is doing a citywide water facilities assessment and based on, and waiting for the recommendation of the assessment report. Uh, as of now, that project is not a uh, active project. Okay, but that million, the million dollars isn't uh, sitting in the budget somewhere? Yes, it goes back to the water funds. Okay, that's great. In, in addition, Thank just to add to that, uh, Commissioner Hansen, again, the project you're referring to, the PM 26A, um, you know, that is a joint venture between the county, Three Valleys, and uh, and potentially the city. But but you are correct in that we do, um, uh, you know, we certainly have other priorities. Uh, and before we commit funds, we certainly want to do a, a comprehensive hydrogeological study to see how that connection will impact our wells. Uh, but again, um, you know, we certainly have other priorities like diversification of our water supply. So um, as Malia mentioned, that the funds are sitting in there, but they will go back um, to our water, our water budget. Well, I, I, I still think I'd like to see the project built ultimately, um, but I think it's a regional project and regional projects were taken on by Three Valleys. And so Three Valleys should pay 100% you know, if they can work with uh, LA County with uh, the grant funding, that's great. But uh, really there's there's more uh, benefiting agencies than just Glendora. Anybody who stores water in the main San Gabriel Basin is gonna benefit from this connection. Agreed, agreed. And we are certainly taking that into consideration. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Shaw, any comments or questions? Yeah, just a couple. Um, I agree with um, Commissioner Hansen on that last comment about uh, who should be paying for that project. A um, uh, couple compliments to staff, I think. Congrats on getting some stuff over the line CIP-wise. I know that's always tough, but it's very important for staff and morale to, to get things actually finished and over the line and you can move on. Uh, and also, I, I presume if I understood it right at the very beginning of the presentation, you had 14 proposals for future CIP projects. That's fantastic. Uh, and I think that's probably um, a compliment to staff again for probably writing a good RFP. So hopefully you guys will take that all into consideration and pick the right uh, contractor and move forward. That's all I got. All right, thank you. Uh, finally, Commissioner Armel. I don't have any comments. It was a good presentation. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, then the recommendation was to receive and file the update. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Thank you. That was Commissioner Armel with the motion. Is there a second? Second. That was uh, Vice Chair Hansen. I'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Armel. Yes. Commissioner Fields is absent. Commissioner Shaw. Yes. 
Vice Chair Hansen? Yes. And Chair Nakano? Yes. That passes 401. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Then we'll move along to agenda item number seven Glendora's Water Supply Outlook. A uh, big one. Uh, I'd like to invite Water Division Manager uh, Wirt to report. Hi, everyone. Glad we could all uh, meet again and uh, talk about water supply. Um, so uh, I'll jump right into the slides and then we can take your questions at the end. So, um, next slide. Um, rain season goes from October through April uh, 2021 and 2022. So far this season, uh, Glendora uh, received 7.36 inches of rain as of September 30th, 2021. Our seasonal average is 24 inches. Uh, as we move into the new rainy season, we hope to have a wetter year than last. Um, just an FYI, if you've been paying attention like I have to the current rain that came through in Northern California, at least um, they got pretty plummeted. So that's a good start. Um, as of September 26, um, 2021, the Northern Sierra pack, of course, is zero. Snowpack peaked in April at 72% of normal. Upper Colorado Basin, of course, snowpack is at zero percent of normal. Uh, snowpack there also peaked in April. Um, state water uh, supply allocation has been lowered to 5%. Um, next slide, please. Um, water deliveries through the San Gabriel River. Um, upper district uh, during July uh, 2021, upper district uh, delivered 618 acre feet uh, to the Azusa surface water treatment uh, plant. Uh, through the San Gabriel District Pipeline. Uh, during August 2021, Upper District delivered 779 acre feet to Azusa Surface Water Treatment Plant uh, through the San Gabriel District Pipeline and 145 acre feet uh, diverted to uh, Canyon Basin. During September uh, 2021, flows through the San Gabriel District Pipeline were at 15 CFS uh, to Azusa's uh, Surface Water Treatment Plant and two CFS being diverted into Canyon Basin. Um, during September of uh, 2021, Upper District uh, did not make any deliveries to, uh, through USG3. Uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, San Gabriel Valley District made no deliveries in the months of June to July, and Three Valleys uh, made no raw water deliveries uh, in the months of June to July. Next slide, please. Um, key information, on October 8th, uh, 2021, the Baldwin Park Key Wells most recent measurement was 184.5 feet, um, about 34.5 feet outside of target range of uh, 150 feet uh, for the safe yield. Um, the safe yield will be dropping this year too. I believe it goes to 130 feet. So uh, current historic low was uh, 169.4 on September 21st. Um, 2018, um, we're only 15.1 uh, feet from that record level as October 8th, uh, 2021. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, these are gonna be um, some pictures, um, some earlier <clears throat> and up until at least October or mid-October. Um, so you can see some different changes up there as well as some work that's ongoing there. So in January of 2021, on the 4th, this is what the San Gabriel Reservoir looked like. Um, on the left-hand side, out towards the back there, you can see the top of the intake structure. Um, but you can still also see the what we call the islands uh, being exposed um, right next to it. Um, next slide, please. Uh, on September 24, 2021, that's what it looked like. So a handful of months later, um, that uh, part of that is the drought and part of that is they actually drained that on purpose to do some uh, maintenance work on that intake structure. Um, um, I believe I have a better picture, but in the background, you can kind of see the trucks lined up and uh, things, things are moving there, um, hauling uh, dirt, silt and debris out of that uh, um, basin there in the reservoir. Next slide, please. Again, this is just another uh, view from it. 
Um, again, it gives you a better look at some of the construction uh, activities, <clears throat> uh, removing that debris and silt and working on that main intake structure there. Um, next slide, please. Uh, kind of a wider picture. Um, and the far background, it looks like a thin black line that's actually a um, uh, PVC line uh, that they're running from the upper portion of the canyon where uh, water dumps in from both the north and from the east. And they're piping it down inside that um, line and dumping it directly into the bottom of the intake channel. I believe they said it was like three to four CFS. It's actually a pretty good sized line. Um, I haven't been able to get in there and take a look at it, at it although I, uh, it always intrigues me to see how they how they get around working some of this stuff. Um, next slide, please. Again, uh, another, just another perspective on the on the dam cleaning operations. Next slide, please. Morris Reservoir. Morris Reservoir hasn't changed very much. You'll see over the next few slides, they're actually holding that at, uh, at just about full pool, pool, if not slightly over. Um, they have plans to actually drain this one um, and do maintenance to it too. Um, I haven't heard uh, anything through any engineering report from Watermaster or Stetson or even through LA County. Uh, my, my hope is that it's going to be delayed um, because that would make it even more difficult um, to prepare for next summer. Um, so this picture was taken in January of 2021. Uh, next slide. This picture was taken in um, September of 2021. As you can see, there's not much change into that reservoir. Slightly lower, but not uh, significantly. Um, next slide, please. Pictures of USG3. Um, I had no intake coming in at that time. Um, I take a picture facing back to the spillway. Um, in good years, that water is up to the edge of the spillway. So you can definitely see that there's a significant reduction in the actual water going down that river. Um, and this is also from September of uh, 2021. Next slide, please. Uh, Committee of uh, Nine Inlet Structure um, in September of uh, 2021. Um, significantly reduced water around the intake, uh, basically for the same reason, lower water levels in the river coming through. Um, thus, we'll lower water levels at the intake. Um, next slide, please. Um, that's the Committee of Nine uh, channel downstream of the inlet structure. Um, in the, to the back of that, um, this actually splits. Um, one heads south down into uh, Azusa's uh, treatment plant as well as uh, CIC takes some water. This is a very, very low flow, uh, somewhere between two and three CFS. Um, surprisingly, um, throughout the summer, um, LA County and, and others were diverting um, at least, I would say, two CFS um, on a, co a very constant rate. So that actually probably helped us avoid completely drying out. Um, and you'll see that in some of the following pictures. Next slide, please. There's your uh, Canyon Basin North Pit um, at the overflow <clears throat> um, and two separate dates. One was October of 2019. Um, as you can see, the pit's pretty full um, up at the overflow. Um, and then in picture on the right is from May uh, 14th, 2021. Um, water table starting to drop uh, in the mid-year. Um, next slide, please. Now that's four months later, uh, 9 24, 2021, uh, about a 20 foot plus drop from um, the overflow. Um, and um, again, significant reduction of water in the North Pit um, due to the drop and uh, no water coming in. Next slide, please. Um, this is also from uh, September of 2021. It's just from the backside um, so that you can kind of see out over the um, pit and also in the overflow. It's really a significant drop from that overflow down to the water line. 
um, uh, over 20 feet. Um, next slide, please. So there's your county inlet to the south pit, and there is some water in there. Um, it's it's flowing pretty slow um, due to some um, good uh, outreach. Um, Chisholm reached out to LA County, talked to him about how that water gets split um, and what some of the challenges that LA County was having um, and was able to get them to split that and divert it into both pits instead of just the North pit at one time. It's not a constant flow, um, but it's pretty regular. Next slide, please. So on your left is January, 2021, the South pit inlet. The inlet is actually underwater, so you can see the uh, air and uh, bubbling out. On the right, that's your south pit in uh, May of 2021. Um, that's the uh, outlet pipe into the pit. You can actually see it, um, and it is exposed. Significant uh, water level drop over a four-month period. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, that says September. Again, um, significant drop in the pit. Um, however, um, the ray of sunshine all of us were getting every time we'd go out there to take a look is that we, we did have a, a slight but steady flow um, into that pit, um, mostly. Um, next slide, please. Um, that's, cast, that's the south pit also. I'm looking out the north overflow, but that was in January. Again, you can see the overflow is... Uh, the dry, that's uh, the railing that's closest uh, to the bottom of the screen. And then further out in the back, you can see the uh, south pit uh, inflow uh, bubbling up. Um, next slide, please. Again, just another view of what that overflow looks like uh, at the same time period in January of 2021. See some reduction in the volume in the pit as well. Next slide, please. There's your south pit, uh, uh, south pit overflow. Um, looking out into the pit uh, in September of 2021, again, a significant receding and shrinking of that um, water in that pit level. Um, next slide, please. Um, so uh, Glendora Water Supply Outlook, um, from October um, 26, uh, this wells where we were pumping an average of 4,600 gallons per minute or 10.2 cubic feet per second. Um, Metropolitan Water District for the majority of that time up until mid-October was flowing four to six CFS. As of last week, uh, we've been able to um, get down to zero flow on all connections. Um, there is a slight increase in well level out at um, uh, San Gabriel Wells, which are uh, next to those pits. Not, not anything excessive, but uh, at least a foot or two difference as they begin to fill that north pit. Um, uh, the water system is currently or was currently at 64.25% uh, uh, well water and 35.7% MWD water at about six CFS or 2,693 gallons per minute on average for MET. That was up until uh, beginning of October. As we started getting the cooler weather, we were able to start um, uh, decreasing our intake from Metropolitan Water District. And then over the last few weeks due to the rain and even the colder weather, we've been able to, um, like I said, completely come off of Metropolitan Water District. Our hope is that weather will, um, cool down. I know the next few days are going to be warm, but hopefully we can get into a cooler trend and that'll help us uh, stay off of Metropolitan. Um, Canyon Basin Well uh, 8, uh, sounding as 121.3 um, static as of September uh, 24th. Uh, Glendora Basin Well 11, sounding at uh, 353.8 static as September 24th. And 345 feet static as June 24th. 2021, a difference of 8.8 .8 feet. And then um, at the next uh, meeting, I'll have some more information about the wells and any increases we're having. Um, next slide, please. That's it. Um, my recommendation is that you receive and uh, file the Glendora Water Supply Outlook and um, we're available for any questions. All right. 
Thank you, Dale. Um, let's open it up to some uh, discussion deliberations from the commissioner. Uh, Vice Chair Hansen, any comment or questions? Yeah, uh, great report, Dale. Um, question regarding the uh, San Gabriel Dam. Do you know when the last time they cleaned it out? Um, I want to say it wasn't too long ago. I want to say it was less than five years ago. Both relate, both fire related. So okay. because we had a, a pretty decent fire season up there and we had the heavy rains, washed it all in. And then now over this last year, not including this year, they had the heavy rains and sediment washed in there and they wanted to clean it out. So I want to say there was about five years in between the last time. Last time, I believe San Gabriel was the only one that was cleaned out, but counties, um, uh, plan was to get them all. They even did a smaller dam above San Gabriel before they did San Gabriel. So they were trying to get to all three. Um, I'm hoping weather moves in and they're unable to do it until summertime. That's what my hope. And then maybe yeah. plan, plan a little bit better with us, the purveyors, as far as how much they're going to release and at what time, because I'd hate to just have them dump it all out and miss the opportunity to use that through summer. So um, Chisholm and myself have been um, – in constant contact with uh, LA County Committee of Nine, uh, Watermaster, of course, trying to make sure we gather enough information and that we're at the table anytime that discussion comes up. Um, my my current uh, um, routine is I go up there on Fridays. I'll take all the pictures every Friday of each different dam, and I reach out to the guys at LA County that are up there and talk to them. We can even we even drive out here off by uh, Big Dalton, go to the county yard there. We can talk to some guys there about what what their plans are <clears throat> up there. So we're trying to keep that communication open and that relationship with LA County. It seems to be working. Um, and then of course um, there are some other issues that Watermaster is trying to deal with as far as how much we have to release, how much we have to put back, all this other stuff that comes up in the water world. And we'll it, it, just, it just looked like there was a fair amount of sediment that was uh, behind the dam. But was that uh, was that a normal amount, or did it look pretty high to you? No, it looked high. And and the, yeah. the thing that I looked at was I was kind of looking at timing. Right, you're in September to October, and it's almost like it it took quite a while to build the inroad, to lay the main, to uh, get that main into that bottom channel of the uh, outtake. And then start trucking this stuff out. It's it's a quite a scene. I mean, that, that's a round robin of trucks all day long. But just watching it from afar, that little excavator, like four dumps into the back of the truck, and it's the next truck four dumps. So it, it's quite time consuming to move that silt. Um, I don't. I'm, I didn't dig too deep in it. I don't know all the specifics of how much they were planning to remove or hoping to remove. Um, and I haven't been up there since this last week of rain because uh, uh, it just was raining. Um, my hope is to get up there tomorrow and, and see what's there and then maybe talk to somebody and see what their staggered plan may be. Okay, great. Uh, the, other, the other comment I had was um, I'd like for you to take a look at the feasibility of um, taking treated import water from the CIC treatment plant. Mm -hmm. um, my guess is it's cheaper than MWD water. And now that uh, CIC's completed their wellhead treatment over in Baldwin Park and Three Valleys is delivering raw water to the, the CIC plant, uh, they've got a, a fair amount of uh, capacity. And okay. Glendora, Glendora has rights uh, in, in the CIC treatment plant. So I know it's on the, uh, the southwest uh, zone of the city, so it's low down. Yeah. Um, but... Um, you know, instead of buying expensive uh, MWD water, you might be able to get it cheaper. Yeah, I'll work with Chisholm on that. Um, I'm in my former employer, Golden State Water. I work with uh, that uh, general manager as well as working out purchasing from CIC. Again, you're right; it's at the bottom of our system. <clears throat> Doesn't make it difficult, but it just goes into a spot where um, most of the water is flowing to. So we're gonna yeah. back, we're gonna back everything up. I think it's a good uh, good plan, though, to exercise your uh, your flexibility on where you get water. Um, if the Weymouth treatment plant goes down, you know, if you haven't really been exercising the CIC connection, it may be a little bit of a struggle to get up and running. So uh, it's worth looking at. 
I agree, sir. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Hansen. Those are some great <clears throat> suggestions. Um, Commissioner Shaw? Yeah, sure. Again, I won't repeat what Rick had to say. Um, he had some of the same thoughts I did. Um, a good presentation, always. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, and I would just say I agree with staff sentiment uh, not to drain reservoirs for cleaning purposes currently, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary because we're not quite sure how uh, the drought and or the rainy season, fingers crossed that it's rainy. But uh, so I, I would agree with that approach and continue to uh, work with uh, the partners that we have to make sure that we keep that water in there. Thanks. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Armel. I don't have any comments. Thanks for the report. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, sounds good. So the recommendation is to receive and file the Glendora Water Supply Outlook. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. That was Commissioner right. Shaw. Yes. Okay. That was too quick. Who was that? <laughs> uh, me. Second. Thank you very much. Uh, I will take a roll call vote. Commissioner Armel? Yes. Commissioner Fields is absent. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Vice Chair Hansen? Yes. And Chair Nakano? Yes. That passes 401. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the 2021 State Water Supply Update. This time I'd like to invite Assistant Public Works Director Obagalu to report. Thank you, and uh, good evening once again, uh, Chair Nakano, Vice Chair Hansen, and uh, members of the Commission. Uh, today I'll be providing an overview on our water supply. Uh, this was a presentation I recently gave to Council a couple of weeks ago with a few updates. Um, and as you know, conditions are continuously evolving, so I'll most likely be giving another update at our future joint uh, meeting here in a couple of weeks. <clears throat> but it really takes a step back uh, in terms of you know, what Dale just talked about, uh, the conditions we're currently facing. And really talks about some of the challenges we're currently facing from a, a state, a regional, and a local perspective as it relates to the current drought. Um, uh, next slide, please. And, and so today, you know, we'll discuss the two systems in which we utilize to import water to Southern California, as well as the current state of our local uh, local water supply. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so really highlighted here is a general makeup of Southern California's water portfolio. Uh, generally speaking, 45% of our water is made up of our local groundwater basins, uh, recycled water, desolidation supply, various conservation efforts. Uh, the remaining 55% emanates from the upper Sierras in uh, Northern California through the state water project system and the Colorado River through Metropolitan's Colorado River uh, Aqueduct. Uh, and what makes this drought particularly unique and a, a bit more challenging than those of the past is uh, really for the first time in history, both of our imported water supplies are being tested and being stressed. Uh, you know, generally we've had redundancy in the past where if, you know, we receive less than average allocation from, from the state water project system, uh, we can rely on the Colorado River to compensate and, and vice versa. Uh, unfortunately, this year uh, we don't have that luxury. Next slide, please. And so the two watersheds associated with our imported water systems are the Upper Colorado River Basin, uh, as represented by the black enclosure there covering a few states, uh, and the Upper Sierras up by the, by the Bay Delta in Northern California. Uh, this is the drought monitor from, from last year. Uh, can we advance one? You know, it's truly incredible what difference a year makes. Uh, you know, currently both watersheds associated with our imported supplies are deemed as either in the extreme uh, or exceptional drought conditions. Uh, next slide, please. And, and so let's just, uh, just to take a deeper dive into the state water system, uh, talk a little bit about how we got to this point. Uh, next slide, please. And what is being noticed here is a large disparity between uh, the observed snowpack in the upper Sierras and the projected runoff. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, this amount of separation is actually unprecedented. Yes, you know, we've, uh, this was a below average snowpack year, but not a significantly below average year. You know, as Dale mentioned, 
Uh, we had 72 percent uh, in the past in Northern California, uh, which is not all that bad. Uh, but most of the runoff incurred as a result was only 38 percent of that. You know, so we're not seeing the resulting runoff supplies that we have been accustomed to seeing. And there's a number of reasons for that. You know, you have consistently hotter and hotter temperatures, uh, consistent years of drought, uh, among others. Uh, let's go ahead and advance once, please. And so just to provide a, a historical sense of what runoff has looked like in the past, Metropolitan Water District has ranked resulting annual runoff from past years as shown on this, on this graphic here, uh, lowest to highest with lowest being on the far left and highest on the far right. Uh, the average runoff for Northern California is approximately 18 million acre feet. Uh, let's advance one, please. Uh, last year, we were well below average at about 10, uh, 10 million acre feet. Uh, you know, uh, this year, uh, if we can advance one, uh, this year is projected to be the fourth, uh, go back once, please. Uh, this year is projected to be the fourth lowest runoff, uh, projected meaning up until the end of the water year. Uh, and again, the water year just ended, the next water year just began uh, in October. So unless we see a, a miracle, uh, and unless we see consistent rains like what we witnessed earlier this week, we're not expecting any more resulting runoff to materialize from this system. Next slide, please. And, and that has really taken a toll on the reservoirs and other facilities across the state. You know, Lake Oroville is uh, the largest and most significant reservoir on the state water system. Uh, and here's a north facing shot of the Bidwell Bar Bridge leading up to the reservoir. And this was back in 2019. Uh, can we advance once, please? And so here's a shot of the same location earlier this year. And once more, please. And here's a shot from just three months ago. So, you know, as you can see, uh, levels have reduced substantially in a relatively very short amount of time. Again, the, the, the earlier rains in which we witnessed earlier this week uh, was able to mitigate this, uh, however, not significantly. Uh, this reservoir is still about 27% full. So uh, next slide, please. And here's another look at the reservoir. Uh, this is facing north, actually looking at the intake structures from the Hyatt Power Plant. Uh, the reservoir reached its historic low on August 1st, 2021. And this is the lowest it's ever been since it was filled back in 1968. Uh, and as a result, operations ceased at the Hyatt Power Plant. Uh, and again, this is of great significance because uh, this is the very first time operations at this plant has stopped as a result of low levels. Uh, next slide, please. And so just to give a better sense of, of what is developing, uh, this graphic shows the current storage levels for Oroville. Uh, can we advance one? And so prior to this year, the previous storage low was around, hovering around 887,000 acre feet. This was back in uh, 1977. Uh, the Department of Water Resources has projected an outlook for where they believe the storage levels will trend through the remainder of this year, as, uh, till December. Uh, and two projections were provided. Uh, can we advance one, please? Um, so one for average hydrogeological conditions is represented by the blue dashed line here. And so this again, assuming from this point forward, we start to receive average rainfall, uh, which will actually put us above the previous historic low by the end of the year. Uh, can we advance one? And they also provided a projection for a dry condition, meaning we continue at our current trend. And that puts us at under the previous historic low to round off the year. Uh, you know, in either case, this is not uh, a good for the state water system supply going into next year. Conditions are looking bleak. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is indicative of a 0% allocation from this system next year. Uh, so right now, our allocation is 5%, you know, as Dell mentioned, which is a historic low. Actually, the last time we had a 5% allocation was in 2015. Again, we thought we would never see that again, but you know, yet again, here we are. Um, and what this is signaling is to anticipate and plan for a 0% allocation from this system. Uh, and again, hope that conditions improve, uh, which will consequently increase allocation levels. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so let's just switch gears for a bit and you know, discuss our other source of imported supply, which is the Colorado River system. Next slide. Again, uh, here it's much of the same story. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a bit more dramatic uh, as we have the snowpack at 88% uh, normal with the resultant runoff at only 31%. Uh, again, this large disparity in snowpack and runoff is something we're not accustomed to seeing. Um, however, when you have consecutive dry years, hotter and hotter temperatures, and we're seeing less and less of that resulting runoff materialize from this, uh, from this snowpack. Uh, let's go ahead and advance one for the graphic. And just to get a sense of this, average, run average runoff uh, on this system is hovering around 11 million acre feet. Uh, can we advance one? And last year, we were well below the average at approximately 6 million acre feet. And, uh, let's advance one more, please. And so this year's runoff is projected to be the second lowest uh, within this time frame since 1964. Next slide, please. Uh, a couple of shots of Lake Mead, uh, one of the most important and significant reservoirs on this system. Uh, you can see a, a dramatic drop in water levels as evidenced by the discoloration or, or bathtub ring there. Uh, bear in mind that this system has been in a drop for majority of the past decade. And the last time Lake Mead was considered full capacity was back in uh, 2000, uh, so just over 20 years ago. And since then, it has dropped an astonishing 143 feet. Next slide, please. And the Colorado River system is operated and maintained by the Bureau of Reclamation. And they provided a two year projection of where they think storage levels will be for this reservoir, as well as Lake Powell, which is another key reservoir in this system. But this is looking at Lake Mead, uh, and there are really two levels of significance here. Uh, level one and level two shortage levels as identified by the red line there. Uh, let's go ahead and advance one. Uh, so the green line represents actual levels, while the blue uh, dashed line is their projections for the next two years. And what, you, and what can be seen here is a decline in lake levels into summer of 2023. Uh, let's go ahead and advance one, please. And so really of significance here is where they're projecting levels to be at the end of uh, this year, which is 1065. Uh, that is below the first shortage level of 1075. This triggered the first ever water shortage uh, declaration for Lake Mead last uh, a couple of months ago on August 16th. Uh, I'm sure many of you heard about it. Uh, it was all over the news, all over the media. Uh, it was a very significant uh, as this is the first time this has ever happened uh, in history. And what this means is states like Nevada, Arizona will start seeing cuts to their supplies. Fortunately, California has more rights on the system you know, and will not see cutbacks at this shortage level. Uh, let's go ahead and advance one, please. Unfortunately, uh, projection, projections show lake uh, levels at the end of 2022 at 1048. Uh, this is below the second uh, shortage level of 1050. This will then trigger additional cutbacks for Nevada and Arizona. But again, this will not trigger cutbacks for the state of California. Um, however, we will start seeing cutbacks to our supplies when reservoir levels hit 1045. Um, that is not expected in the next two years, uh, but if this current trend continues, we can expect to see cutbacks by the end of year three. And that is when we will start seeing impacts to our imported water supply at the state level. And that's why measures are being taken now you know, to mitigate uh, for those expected cutbacks. Uh, and I'll discuss some of those measures here shortly. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this shows Metropolitan's water storage balances over the course of the past two decades. And really tells a story of why Los Angeles and surrounding counties were not uh, mandated as a drought emergency until a couple of weeks ago. These are the end of the year balances. Uh, so Metropolitan started the year with a record storage balance of 3.2 million acre feet at the end of 2020. This is really a testament to the work this region has been doing with regards to conservation, uh, keeping demands relatively low. Um, however, there's always room for improvement. Uh, Metropolitan has projected that they will pull from this storage uh, at, and end the year with about 2.5 million acre feet going into next year. This storage can certainly sustain the region through this dry year and potentially next year as well. However, we must start planning now for subsequent dry years. Right, next slide, please. And, and so all of these uh, developments culminated into several drought response actions being implemented by the federal, the state, and the regional government. Uh, the entire state currently is in an emergency drought situation. You know, it started with two counties in Northern California and has now expanded to all 58 counties of the state. 
Um, of note, again, the six counties being served by Metropolitan Water District was not placed under the emergency drought order until just uh, last week on October 19th. Uh, Metropolitan's service area was able to initially avoid the emergency order primarily due to you know, record storage capacities that has been developed over time, uh, as mentioned previously. Uh, so just looking at a timeline here, on July 8th, uh, an executive order was issued by the state prompting all Californians to voluntarily reduce water usage by 15% from 2020 levels. The very next month on August 16th, uh, Bureau of Reclamation declared the first ever water shortage on the Colorado River. Uh, again, this was triggered by Lake Mead falling below that first shortage level as discussed previously. And the very next day on August 17th, uh, Metropolitan Water District issued a water supply alert for the first time in seven years. Again, calling on the region to voluntarily reduce their water consumption in order to preserve our water supply. Next slide, please. And, and so we've talked a little bit about the two important supplies in the state water project system and right, the Colorado River system. And we've discussed some of the challenges associated with those uh, systems as a result of this pending drought. Yeah, but really, how does that impact our local supplies? And more importantly, how does that impact us here as Glendorians? Uh, next slide, please. So our service area here is uh, in the city is shown in blue, and, and it's really comprised of a total of 11 square miles, servicing about 52,000 people or 13,500 customers. Our average annual demand is about 12,000 acre feet uh, per year, give or take. Uh, you know, the city pumps groundwater from the main San Gabriel Basin, uh, utilizing eight of its active wells. Next slide, please. So this is a general location map of the May San Gabriel Water Basin. Uh, it's located just below the Raymond Basin to the northwest and the Punta Basin to the southeast. Um, of significance is the geographical location of Glendora within this basin. Uh, we are in the far upper portion of the basin, uh, and you can see the location of our wells as represented by the, uh, the blue dots there. Uh, again, given Glendora's location within this basin, our wells are much shallower than purveyors in the lower portions of the basin and much more sensitive to the impacts of the drought. Um, you know, so again, as, as, uh, as Vice Chair Henson mentioned, this is it's critical that we start to look at ways to really diversify our, our water supply and be able to pull water from the Southern or the more healthier portions of the basin uh, through strategic partnerships as, as, uh, as uh, Commissioner Henson mentioned with CIC uh, and other municipalities. So. Uh, the black circle here at the center of the basin is what is known as the Baldwin Park Key Well, and it's used as a general indication of water elevations throughout the basin. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so key well levels are tracked uh, by the main San Gabriel water master. The red line represents what is known as the operating safe yield, which is at 200 feet. We generally like to operate above this line in an attempt to keep the basin as healthy as possible. You know, currently, we're, we're below that mark at around 185 feet, as represented by the blue uh, squiggly line there. Uh, so this basin is as well for in the toll of the current drought conditions. Of note, water supplies for this basin is generally augmented by imported water. So any future cutbacks to our imported water supply, uh, primarily on the state water project system, will inevitably impact our local groundwater levels as well. Uh, next slide, please. And so uh, this is a breakdown of our water supply source over the last several years. It really gives you a flavor of not only where our water comes from, uh, but how much water we use in relative to hydrological conditions. Uh, the, the recent drought of 2014, 2015 was our most recent drought. Uh, in that year, our demands were above average at just above, just over 13,000 acre feet. You know, we, we tapped into our imported water supply to make up 36% of our demands. Conversely, in 2017, you know, was a major wet year for us here in California. We were able to cut our demand by nearly 2,000 acre feet from our average and met 100% of our demands utilizing our local supplies. Uh, you know, this was actually the case from 2017 to 2020. So 2021 is actually our first time purchasing imported water in three years. And again, 2021 conditions are resemblance of 2014. Our demands and water supply source somewhat mirrored that of 2014. Um, so although not as dire, uh, currently we're in the last quarter of the year and we've tapped into 19% of our imported supply to, to meet our current demands. Next slide, please. 
And, and again, so, you know, we may not be able to predict or control weather conditions, you know, but as Mondo mentioned earlier, we, uh, we do have a certain amount of control over uh, how we utilize water responsibly. And I just want to encourage our community to continue to practice uh, the responsible use of water. Um, again, there's plenty of programs available on Metropolitan's website, thewaterwise.com. And here at the city, we are continuously adapting to uh, evolve uh, to the ever-changing drought conditions and, uh, and the mandates uh, that are triggered as a result of, of, the, of the drought. And so as part of our ongoing effort to encourage water conservation, the city offers multiple rebate incentives for residents. Uh, and again, really there's two primary programs that we highlight, uh, that is the purchasing of water efficient devices, toilets, sprinklers, nozzles, irrigation, uh, landscapes, um, et cetera. So again, it, it's important that we just continue to uh, not lose sight of, of this key uh, concept of conserving water. Uh, next slide, please. And so just to wrap up, you know, again, the drought is, is intense and we're seeing things we've, we've never seen before. Uh, disparity between the snowpack and resulting runoff is not a good sign. Uh, and as we move forward, this may very well be the new normal for us. And we have to be able to adapt accordingly and continue to, again, conserve water and utilize water uh, in a more responsible manner. Uh, the projections for imported supplies and local supplies are looking very bleak, uh, at least up until next year. And that is why you are seeing all of these drought actions, uh, emergency mandates being implemented across all levels of government as it pertains to our water supply. And again, con conditions are continuously evolving, uh, which brings about new mandates, uh, new regulations. Um, and so I'll be providing an, another update, uh, another water supply outlook update at the upcoming joint meeting next month. Uh, next slide, please. And, and so with that, that concludes my presentation and I'm uh, ready to take any questions at this time. Commissioner's uh, questions will go down the line again, Commissioner uh, Hansen. Yeah, Chisholm, uh, great, great report. Um, years ago, uh, the Metropolitan Water District adopted the philosophy of uh, sharing the pain. Uh, and it was primarily for all 26 agencies in, in uh, Metropolitan Service Area in Southern California. But have you heard anything of, with, uh, with respect to negotiations on the Colorado River, uh, what, what California or the Metropolitan Water District might do with Arizona and Nevada? Because even though we're not affected right now, um, MWD may give, give away something in the short term for uh, a long-term benefit uh, for the region, for not just California, but you know the Southwest. Have you heard anything uh, with what they might be uh, negotiating? You know, nothing specific has come out of that, uh, Vice Chair, but I know, uh, you know, Metropolitan has a number of strategic agreements um, and, and partnerships, as you mentioned, with uh, uh, Nevada and, and some of the more uh, arid regions in Arizona. Um, uh, but nothing specific, at least publicly, has come out that, I, that I'm aware of at this time. Yeah, well, that, you know, if they do, it could even uh, worsen the impact of uh, shortages on the Colorado River for us. And so... Again, uh, we need to be more self-sufficient with our local supplies. No, absolutely. You know, I couldn't agree more. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioner Shaw. Well, I guess I didn't need to put my hand up. Apologies. <clears throat> um, agreed with uh, Commissioner Hanson. Chisholm, great report. Um, I actually had the benefit of seeing a uh, fairly long presentation from Metropolitan on the CRA uh, status and uh, really some really good history. So I, uh, if it's okay with you, I'll email it to you, Chisholm, and you can disperse it as, as you see fit. Um, I did have a couple, couple questions. Um, I think you nailed it on the head. Obviously, it's uh, uh, a very difficult time in terms of imported water. So focusing on local water is really gonna be really important uh, in the coming months. Um, and it's probably an educational question on my part. Um, as you mentioned, the, the state or the governor um, extended the uh, drought declaration or proclamation to all of Southern California. So the whole state essentially so uh, 
um, like I said, educational question, maybe what what uh, what does Glendora have in place to address a potential uh, reduction of water use? We have uh, some kind of ordinance in place and have to come come back either to this commission or the council for a resolution to implement portions of that. But just want to throw that out there and see see what we have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, thank you, Commissioner Shaw. So yes, we do have a, a number of uh, items in place. We have what we what is known as the ERP emergency response plans. Uh, we have emergency response plans from levels one to four. Uh, so again, you know, this is a, a very new mandate. This emergency drought is a very new mandate. So we'll have to see how that materializes over the course of the coming weeks and what that looks like for us. Uh, which will then trigger us to either go to emergency response plans one, two, or three. And what Essentially, what that is, is a mandatory uh, decrease in, in water usage. Uh, and, and again, uh, that is being brought about by this emergency declaration. Um, but also, more importantly, I think on the positive side, uh, this also, this emergency declaration allows us to be able to uh, apply for some grants, you know, to be able to um, uh, innovatively develop some conservation programs or diversify our water supply. So, uh, you know, we kind of look at it both ways. Gotcha. Thank you. Agreed on the, the grant side as well. Sorry, Allison, go ahead. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to add a little a little something. This is um, would be a, a good topic to bring with council, you know, to discuss would be do, does the city of Glendora want to, you know, what, what approach do we want to take towards any of our own potential ordinances for um, conservation? Makes sense to me. Yep. That's all I got, Justin. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Commissioner Armel. Do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I just had a quick question related to, um, you know, we've talked about like our, you know, diversifying kind of our portfolio and local supplies um, with the imported water and um, current information you just provided. But I'm curious. You know, I know that every year we we budget, we plan to to over pump, you know, from our basin, and we plan for like a, the replenishment fee. And when I look at the numbers versus our, our our pumping, you know, of energy and cost to produce the water out of the well, plus the replenishment fee, and then the cost versus metropolitan water, I, I only see like a you know a twenty dollar difference as far as cost. So I didn't know too if there'd just be value in like timing of like time of use of when we choose to use metropolitan water, even though like during like the, the cooler months, we may not necessarily need it because we have an available well supply um, that we're doing. Is there any, um, would it possibly make any sense at all to potentially take some water from metropolitan right now while, while we know that um, it's available and not pump as much of our rights out of our groundwater supply and let some of our basin rights, you know, fill up during like the winter months or have some sort of like strategic, I guess, plan over the next few years, knowing that um, water supplies may be, you know, much more minimal in the coming years, potentially out of our important supplies. No, absolutely. And that is a, a great question and comment. So yes, we are working uh, actively with uh, Water Master to, to come up with a strategy as far as pumping. Um, and strategize accordingly, you know, based on drought versus, uh, you know, when we have an abundance of water. And also that is part of our infrastructure assessment. Uh, we want to take a, a deeper dive into, again, not only diversifying our local and imported supplies, uh, but when, you know, in terms of what triggers us uh, producing water versus, um, you know, versus importing or purchasing water from metropolitan. Uh, with specific uh, regards to, as you mentioned, energy, um, you know, can we potentially alternate to be able to save energy, um, maybe, you know, uh, produce water during low demands, uh, maybe in the evenings or in the mornings versus in the afternoons during the summer times. Uh, so again, all of this will certainly be looked at as part of the uh, infrastructure assessment that we're putting together. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I don't have any further comment myself. So um, the uh, recommendation is to receive and file the 2021 state water supply update for it. Uh, do I have a motion? Sure, I'll move it. And thank you, Ryan. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Thank you, that was Ben. I'll take a roll call vote. 
Commissioner Mel? Yes. Commissioner Fields is absent. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Vice Chair Hansen? Yes. And uh, Chair Nakano? Yes. That passes 401. Thank you. All right. Last up on our agenda is commission or staff closing comments. Uh, does any commissioner or staff have any closing comments before we adjourn? Uh, just one comment. Uh, it's kind of the same theme I've been having all, all evening. Um, uh, many of you are aware of uh, Metropolitan Water District's uh, involvement with the Sanitation District at the Carson Reclamation Project. Um, I'm very supportive of that project, um, but it could have negative impacts upon the city of Glendora's ability uh, or to have water supply out of the Canyon Basin uh, because replenishment may be shifted uh, towards util full utilization of the reclaimed water at the Santa Fe spreading grounds. So that's why I, I'm, I'm encouraging the city to take a look at their uh, Vosburg well and their uh, Irwindale wells um, down in the more in the heart of the main San Gabriel Basin. So when this project come, goes forward, uh, the city will be better positioned with a uh, reliable water supply. That's it. I'm sorry, if I may, it sounds like, um, would you like to agendize an update or, or are you directing staff to bring an agenda item for future meeting? Yeah, um, however it fits into, uh, I thought they were working on a strategic plan yeah, on and, and uh, water, I, water supply. And I can I can address that, Elvia. So yes, you, you are correct, uh, Vice, Vice Chair. We are working on a, um, a strategic plan on infrastructure assessment. and. A significant part of that is um, identifying ways to utilize grant funds or uh, regional partnerships to be able to uh, clean up several of those wells. There's three in Irwindale, uh, Bosburg, which is well seven, but we also have wells three and four. Uh, and then being able to uh, partner with uh, either a CIC through their uh, uh, trunk main to be able to convey that water up, up to, uh, to Green Dollar. So we are looking at several options for that and we do understand uh, the impact that the, the regional recycled water program will have on our wells as it's currently situated here in the, in the upper upper canyons. All right. Um, so great. Thanks. And Elvia, can can I add something too? Just um, these have been some really great comments tonight, and I look forward to the joint meeting in a couple of weeks. And uh, you know, various, various members have mentioned some of your water expertise that you want us to look at. And so I think that that meeting would also be good to, to bring that up again so that we, you know, we can help implement some of these in our plan as we move forward in our plans. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, do we have any other uh, comments or uh, from the commissioners or staff before we adjourn? Nothing for me. No. All right, then hearing done, uh, we, this meeting will be adjourned at 7.52 p.m. Thank you, everyone.